what does this have to do with this? Hi, I'm Bill Berry, and welcome to my desert adventures. And we're pretty sure that there's a remote camera site that was used for viewing attempts to drop nuclear bombs into the Salton Sea and on a hard surface target at the Salton Sea test base to determine how to detonate it. Now, they weren't actual nuclear bombs, but they were, the, they were uh, facsimiles that were designed to be exactly like the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Same size and same weight. Yeah, yeah they were testing the shapes. They, they wanted to get them to be aerodynamically accurate. My friend Sid Burks, a military historian, had told me about two remote camera sites located outside of Salton City. They were part of a group of camera sites and radar sites that had been constructed to track aerial bomb drops into the Salton Sea and on land targets down by the Salton Sea test base. Most of the structures at the test base were demolished or removed. In 1961, due to heavy civilian use of the Salton Sea, the nuclear tracking program was moved from the Salton Sea to Tonopah, Nevada. At that time, much of the equipment was relocated to be used at the Nevada site. By 1999, all but three structures were demolished and removed as part of the base cleanup. Between 1944 and 1961, the development of over 50 nuclear weapons were part of the Cold War. Each one of the weapons that were to be dropped by plane had to be rigorously tested for both aerodynamic performance and proper fusing and detonation by the Sandia personnel at the Salton Sea. When Sid told me about the remote camera sites, I'd asked him if they were remotely operated or remotely controlled, or were they remote? Sid thought they were remotely controlled. And at the time of our visit, Neither one of us had seen any documentation as to how those camera sites were constructed and how they were operated. Since then, by researching some of the old base cleanup reports, as well as learning about the types of cameras used in that era, we were able to put this piece of the puzzle together. We now know that these two camera sites were similar to the one remaining structure left on the shore of the Salton Sea, and probably had two types of cameras mounted on the upper deck of the building. These remote camera sites required a crew whenever there was aeroballistic testing. Men had to go out, open it up, operate the cameras, and after the testing they would close it down, collect the film and other data, and head back to the main base. Two types of sophisticated cameras were used at the Salton Sea. One was the German Escania Cinetheodolite, and the other was the Mitchell Cinetheodolite. The Escania cameras were salvaged from the Nazis' World War II V-2 rocket program and were the best in the world. The Mitchell cameras were also very good. Both systems were a combination of movie camera and theatolite. These sophisticated camera tracking systems could track bombs or missiles and give the exact trajectories. These were very large and heavy instruments. They functioned best with some elevation which meant that large structures had to be built in order to operate and maintain them. In my research, I found a drawing that showed the remote camera sites and how they were set up. The drawing shows two buildings, one for the generator and one for the cameras, as well as a 500-gallon diesel fuel tank that was buried. This was from a base cleanup report and gave us some very good information about how the camera sites were put together. Here is a view of the Salton Sea test base and all of the facilities that were constructed between 1944 and about 1950. The two remote camera sites that we've been talking about are right here. Here's camera site number one off of the Truck Haven Trail and here's camera site number two below Salton City. They're in a line that allows you to get a good view of this target structure that's in the water or this land target which is right here. Imagine having a bomb drop that close to you when you've got all of these cameras and all of these structures. As a matter of fact, they did have one incident where they dropped a bomb right here and it actually landed on the tennis courts. I found this old map that shows the ballistic camera stations, central control, 
the main base, the water target, and the flight line. This, along with my explorations of the sites, has given me a very good perspective of what's going on out there. The puzzle of this old base is coming together with Google Earth exploration, on-site drone flights, and base cleanup reports. Once we found the foundations and were able to compare them to maps and Google Earth locations showing building numbers and some definitions of their purpose, we were able to figure out what was going on here at the Salton Sea Test Base. Our next episode will look at central control and instrumentation. We'll also do an episode of the story of the dog site, where nuclear weapons were stored outside to determine the impact of environmental stresses. That's it for this episode. I look forward to sharing more about the secrets hidden in our Southern California desert.